Washington. The Supreme Court cleared the way on Monday for President Trump to prohibit the entry of some people into the United States from countries he deems dangerous, but the justices imposed strict limits on Mr. Trump's travel ban while they examine the scope of presidential power over the border. Mr. Trump quickly hailed the court's decision to hear arguments on the travel ban in October, saying, in a formal White House statement, not a tweet, that the justice's temporary lifting of some of the legal roadblocks to his ban was a clear victory for national security. As president, I cannot allow people into our country who want to do us harm, Mr. Trump wrote, calling his efforts to limit entry into the country a suspension instead of a ban. I want people who can love the United States and all of its citizens, and who will be hardworking and productive. He later tweeted, very grateful for the 9-0 decision from the U.S. Supreme Court. We must keep America safe. But the opinion also signaled that some of the justices might believe that Mr. Trump exceeded even that broad authority when he twice sought to impose a blanket ban on entry to the United States from certain predominantly Muslim countries. With the limits imposed on Monday by the court, the travel ban will be far narrower than the one he proposed in his first week in office and a later, revised version. For Mr. Trump, the opinion was a rare legal victory after months in which the lower courts repeatedly chastised him for imposing a de facto ban on Muslims centering the country. In May, the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit, in Richmond, VA, said the president's revised order drips with religious intolerance, animus and discrimination. In a statement, Officials at the Department of Homeland Security said the court opinion would allow the department to largely implement the president's executive order. Mr. Trump used similar language in his statement, saying his travel ban would now become largely effective. Critics of the ban disputed those assessments. Seth Aliyawan, the deputy legal director for the American Civil Liberties Union, said the opinion meant that the ban would not apply to many people while the court case proceeds. Clearly. The White House press statement today is based on alternative facts, MS. Wang said. The court's decision could lead two months of administrative and legal wrangling as consular officials try to determine which people are allowed to seek entry into the United States and which are barred by the opinion. We are going to be monitoring all of that, said Becca Heller, the director of the International Refugee Assistance Project, one of the plaintiffs in the case. The justices said the distinction should be easy to administer. In practical terms, this means that the executive order may not be enforced against foreign nationals who have a credible claim of a bona fide relationship with a person or entity in the United States, they wrote. But Justice Clarence Thomas, who issued a partial dissent on Monday that was joined by Justices Samuel A. Polito Jr. and Neil M. Gorsuch, warned that the court's opinion would prove unworkable for officials at consulates around the world and would invite a flood of litigation from people denied entry. Today's compromise will bring an executive officials with the task of deciding, on peril of contempt, whether individuals from the six affected nations who wish to enter the United States have a sufficient connection to a person or entity in this country, Justice Thomas wrote. Based on the dissent, those three justices are likely to vote in favor of the Trump administration the court's four-member liberal bloc, Justices Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Stephen G. Breyer, Sonia Sotomayor and Helena Kagan, are likely to vote against it.